Okay, this is a very good question. What motivate me to uh, in this area? I think that because of the role as a talent partner and also career advisor to our client, talent partners to our clients and career advisor to our candidates, I'm able to witness the firsthand uh, disparity and also biases uh, practices across the industry. So motivated by a strong sense of fairness, uh, doing the right thing is very important uh, and also doing things right, right? So I hope that I'm able to be part of the change agent to create a much more uh, fair and also equitable um, practices across the industry. The good thing as we observe uh, today, I've been working across uh, the industry for more than 20 years. Uh, I've been personally observing a very tangible impact where there's an increase in town diversity of talent pool, uh, where it's not only able to, with the diversity practices, uh, Intel hiring in particular is able to actually foster better culture of innovations and also creativity. Um, and also uh, very important to prepare uh, to actually allow the organizations to have a better diverse perspective that which are value and also integrated into a much more strategic discussions. And also I've been seeing uh, with a much more diversified uh, organizations, the employee is actually feeling a much more greater sense of belonging and engagement. So um, a lot of company organizations right now are aware that it's very important to ensure that their DEI is actually uh, in place to attract and retain the talent that they want. Because at the end of the day, um, people, people, people is the most valuable and expensive asset of the organizations with the current volatility volatility of the business the retentions become the key to make sure that um, the organization is staying ahead of the competitions i think that in short uh, my motivations uh, is actually to um, to ensure that we are seeing continuously seeing a positive shift in terms of uh, prioritizing diversity and inclusion because um, uh, we hope, I hope that this will paving the way uh, for a more equitable and inclusive future in the workplace. I think based on my observation and perspective, uh, the current state of DEI in the workplace, particularly within tech across APAC, uh, present a very mixed picture still. Like what I shared earlier, on one hand, there have been a very notable efforts and also initiative in aim at promoting DI uh, in tech space across APAC. Many companies have recognized and acknowledged that importance of building a diverse uh, team because it will help to foster inclusive workplace where eventually could be translated in much more innovative and also creative uh, organizations. So there are a lot of efforts have been putting in uh, to help to increase the awareness, advocacy, and also we are seeing a much more in, much more investment uh, putting in, in the DEI program itself. However, despite of all these efforts, significant challenges and also disparities still persist. The tech industry in the APAC continued to a certain extent still mill dominant into certain core uh, area of specialization. For example, cybersecurity with women and also underrepresented group facing barrier to entry and career advancement in particular. There is a very strong lack of diversity in leadership positions. This has been proven with a lot of uh, statistics shown uh, across the industry. So um, besides this itself, we are seeing issues such as unconscious bias across the practices, in particular on the recruitment process, uh, systematic barrier, uh, which um, intentionally or unintentionally continue to hinder the progress to a greater diversity and inclusion. 
So um, what we are seeing, like women, ethnic minority, uh, LGBTQ plus individual and people with disability still encounter discriminations, microaggressions and unequal opportunity in recruitment, promotions and also even compensations itself. So, um, however, uh, despite these challenges, uh, I still believe that there is a reason for optimism. Many um, uh, organizations in APEC regions are increasingly recognizing the business imperative of uh, diversity and inclusions and taking concrete steps to address the issue seriously. So there is a growing momentum in the faster speed, I would say, and larger scale around initiatives such as gender diversity uh, quotas, diversity training program, and also inclusive uh, hiring practices. I believe that uh, with the sustained efforts and collective actions um, are needed really to drive a much more meaningful change in the tech industry space, uh, in particular in the APAC region. So there are certain area that, as I shared earlier, uh, for example, fostering partnership between industry stakeholder, government agency, education institute, and community organizations to address all these uh, barriers to make sure that we are actually collectively coming together to promote uh, the diversity at all level of workforce base, entry level until experience. So by working together, I do believe that the tech industry itself will realize its full potential um, collectively as a much more diverse, inclusive and innovative sectors that technically will be a direct reflection in terms of the richness of the talent, uh, region talent and and, and um, diversity. Based on the observations, there are certain areas and common challenges that organizations facing in uh, DI practices. One of it is very common, which is unconscious bias, like what we mentioned during the hiring process, because this will eventually impact the hiring decisions. So we always, when we, when we actually engage with clients, we always observe whether there is a tendency in terms of unconscious bias in the hiring process. If let's say we are actually observing there is a tendency, we will start to raise awareness and also working with clients to develop a much more structured hiring process to minimize this impact. The second part of it is actually limiting uh, diversity in talent pool. Organization always struggle to attract certain diverse pool because uh, there are certain preferences across the hiring measure. Uh, particular in term of industry, in term of domain part of it, which historically homogeneous talent uh, talent pipeline. So uh, we need to address uh, this challenge. A lot of time that we address the challenge with clients by proactively uh, sourcing candidate from diverse background, leveraging on targeted uh, recruitment hay hunting strategy, and build a partnership. Uh, with the diverse community because by doing so we are able to prove and show it to clients that we are able to actually once we actually expand uh, the funnel we are able to get a better pool and also candidate uh, pipelining and then the the third one will be inclusive culture uh, where um, there are a lot of um, culture that have been inherited uh, early on, so it's very important for company to make sure that they continuously driving an inclusive culture uh, because um, this is a very important thing to make sure that uh, we are able to hire, recruit, retain and develop the people that we want. So this can be uh, this can be further uh, enhanced with facilitating culture competency training for employees. Uh, pre promoting inclusive leadership practices and also very important to fostering an open dialogue uh, within the employees group about diversity and inclus inclusions. Uh, the fourth one where we are observing the challenges is actually resistant to change. Some employees uh, may resist that uh, this initiative 
uh, is actually not applicable. It could be potentially due to fear of change. That's very common uh, for us as a human that we perceive change as a fear, uh, perceive it as a threat for their status or opportunity. So these challenges, when we're actually working with clients, we're actually uh, working together to count fostering a buying and engagement through a very clear communications, there will be a fair platform and opportunity across everyone and the involvement of those that key stakeholder in the process, because by doing so, it demonstrating the business of uh, it demonstrating to the community and also employees that this is a very fair and also inclusive uh, practices. The next one we are seeing, one of the areas is actually uh, lack of resources. Uh, not every organization will have the budgets and resources to actually implement DEI because we are not talking about just uh, financially, but also about human uh, resources that uh, the resources that could be potentially implementing effective diversity and inclusion inclusions initiative. So um, what we actually suggesting to those clients that when they are actually uh, facing this lack of resources, um, uh, challenges what we actually working together is actually finding our partners, uh, leveraging our existing resources. Uh, and then last one, um, I think like I mentioned this earlier, it's really about measuring the impact. So it's very, a lot of organizations where they have the intentions to implement it, but I think uh, once implemented, the struggle is really about effectively measure the impact of the uh, diversity initiative and also demonstrate return on investment. So what we work with the clients is actually make sure that the certain KPI are in place to make sure that we are able to track the progress, conducting a regular assessment to do a health check and also survey together from the employees and using data to make an informed decisions. I think that uh, challenges along the way it prompt to happen, it meant to happen. We are dealing with people. Uh, I think that um, this required a lot of multi-faceted. Definitely, there are several effective strategies and best, best practices that uh, organizations can implement uh, to enhance their DEI, in particular in their hiring process. Uh, I think that, as I shared earlier, diverse sourcing channel uh, it's very important with the current multi generations that we are having. Company need to look at it at the variable variety of source uh, beyond traditional job board, social media hiring that need to come into place um, to make sure that that is a very strong uh, diversity focus uh, to make sure that um, every potential platform have been leveraging to cater uh, and also capture the different uh, talent pool. The other area that really I, I, I do see that the law company that should start to really look at, uh, relook into the uh, job descriptions uh, to really review and revise their job description to ensure that they are inclusive and free from biases. Use, for example, use a gender neutral language and focus on essential qualifications is always about skill based hiring right now. So rather than unnecessary prerequisite that may actually exclude certain candidate unintentionally. The other um, practice that we recommend is actually potentially looking at blind resume screening. Um, by implementing a blind resume screening, we are mentioning that to move remove certain identity information such as name, gender, age. Uh, I think that the law practices already in the market that we are seeing that only name uh, we doesn't really put in uh, like gender and age part of it in the resume, but we're still seeing a lot of company actually when uh, requesting us uh, in term of profiling, we still ask a specific question. So we hope that this will help uh, with the blind resume screening. We hope that it will help to mitigate the unconscious bias and ensure that candidates are evaluated based solely on their qualification and also uh, experience. Structure interview with a diverse interview panel that is very important with standardization questions and evaluation criteria to make sure fairness and also consistency. Train the interviewer, very important to actually educate and train the interviewer to make sure that they avoid 
asking bias or discriminatory questions and focus, really focus on candidate skill, competency and fit for the role. And pipeline development program, that's one of the things that we are seeing uh, that's a, a very strong area that we, we are seeing that uh, improvement could be uh, further implemented because invest in pipelining development program to nurture talent from underrepresented group and prepare them to for career opportunity within the organizations. Uh, it's not, we are always encouraging uh, clients that if let's say there are certain uh, skill set or domain or talent that you're looking at within the tech side, knowing the competition is actually very, very intense, it's actually, it's good to look at the difference area of pipeline, for example, not only looking at FTE, uh, FTC, but also opening up third party contracting as part of the interim resourcing to make sure that when there is a seasonal demand coming in, you are able to make sure that the supply of the demand is ready and also ensure that you doesn't uh, let the existing uh, staff get burned out due to the seasonal uh, peak demand. So data tracking and analysis. So we make sure that um, start to really collect and analyze the data. Uh, once you actually set up the diversity metric, you can start with a few metrics that we talk about, for example, like the profile received, the interview, uh, interview uh, shortlisted uh, process, make sure that um, there is a measurement of impact for example, the sustainability metrics that we talk about to make sure that um, there is a demographic compositions on the candidate pool, hiring outcome that eventually that reflected as the employee's retention rate. So we believe that by gradually implementing this strategy and also best practices, organizations can definitely enhance uh, their diversity in their hiring process and create a much more equitable and inclusive workplace. So I believe that fostering diversity is not only benefited to individual, but also organization because it's able to allow to contribute to a broader societal goal of equity and also representation in the workforce. Definitely leadership play a very important role in fostering a diverse and inclusive workplace. Leaders set the tone, establish priorities and allocate resources to shape the organization culture and influence behavior at all level. So uh, based on our observations and also sharing uh, from the best practices from the clients, uh, these are some of the efforts that uh, we could be, leader could be potentially helped to contribute uh, to the DEI agenda within the organization. Setting the tone, leader must articulate a clear commitments to DEI, both verbal and actions. By championing diversity as a core value, an integral part of the organization's identity, leaders send a very strong message that diversity is just not a checkbox but a fundamental aspect on how the organizations operate. Creating policy and also practices, uh, leader play a very key role in developing and implementing policy practices that promote DEI. These include, for example, establishing hiring practices that prioritize diversity, implement inclusive policies such as flexible arrangement, and accommodations for diverse need and ensuring that diversity is integrated in all aspects of organization decisions making process if possible. Third, fostering inclusive leadership. Leader must model inclusive behavior and hold themselves and others accountable of creating that inclusive workplace. This could be potentially include actively seeking out diverse uh, perspective by focusing, by forming a focus group across the organization 
listening and evaluating the contributing to all employees by setting up the channel of feedback and confronting biases and discriminations whenever it addresses is actually happen. So uh, the fourth one that we're looking at is actually providing resources and support. Leader must allocate resources and provide support for DI initiative. This could be potentially looking at financial support for training program, staffing for diversity focus role and infrastructure to support employee resource group and diversity network. Fifth, promoting transparency and accountability. This is one of the key factors. Leader must establish a mechanism for tracking progress on diversity and inclusion goal and holding themselves and also all the stakeholder across the process accountable for the result. This may include regular reporting, meeting, putting diversity metrics, measurement, tracking into management uh, meeting, conducting diversity audit and assessment by, in, by incorporating all the diversity goal uh, into the process evaluations and incentive potentially. Engaging stakeholder, so make sure that your uh, leader might make sure that they're actively engaging with all stakeholder, be it employees, customer, to solicit feedback, build consensus, and foster collaborations around diversity and inclusion. The stakeholders should not only limit it to internal stakeholder, but also external stakeholder collectively as a community. Last but not least, continuous educations and developments. Dealer leader should always invest in their own educations and developments on diversity inclusions topic to deepen their understanding and also enhance their e effectiveness as advocates for change. This may include participations in training program personally, attending conference and workshop. There are plenty of uh, workshop and program have been running on the DI uh, agenda and seeking out mentors and advisor with expertise in this area. Part of it, I believe, I strongly believe that effective leadership contribute and essential for fostering a diverse and inclusive workplace by demonstrating a commitment to DI uh, policy and also practices able to actually create an environment where employees feel valued, respected, and empowered to contribute to their best work, which directly translated and correlated to the business performance and also sustainability. Once again, thank you very much for Fawi for inviting me to share my insight. Feel free to connect me at LinkedIn and hope that we are able to keep the conversations open within this space and looking forward to have the opportunity to collaborate further if that is um, an opportunity given. Once again, wishing everyone a great day ahead. Thank you.